Hello, welcome to Answers TV. My name is Jack Tutsbury, that's the Maltese Falcon. And we've got Oz in the room today. It's the end of the day and we're gonna do a Sound Designs Basics. I, I said it wrong, I can't live with that. Sound Designs Basics, I sound like an absolute. It's the end of a Friday and we're gonna sneak in a video. This is gonna be Sound Design Basics Part 2. The first one I did piano and strings. Thanks for all the lovely comments on that one. I'm gonna try it again, but this time we're going for a lead synth solo patch. Thoroughly appropriate for any wedding or bar mitzvah. Let's go! So the philosophy behind this sound is I want a monophonic shred lead solo, kind of Jan Hammer, if you know that guy, or uh, just a searing sound that's going to cut through a live band. And when I flick to it, I can be heard. Very much like if you're a guitar player, when people talk about using tube screamers and things like that to push the mids forward, I'm looking for that punchy sound that's nice under the fingers and maybe can smooth up some of my shredding. Anyway, let's build it from scratch. This is the whole point, right? I'm using the Nord Stage 3 here. I'm very comfortable with it and use it a lot of the time, but these principles should apply to any keyboard you got there, especially a traditional subtractive synth, which is subtractive synth, is we take a waveform and we chip away at it, subtractive. So first things first, we choose our ingredients, we choose the waveform, and then we start filtering it, subtractive synthesis, right? So let's choose the waveform. I am going to choose, and you are at home, a saw wave. Check this out. Way more pokey than the other one. Saw's my favourite. You may disagree, but we're going to go with saws. Now, next is choosing the filter type. I love a 24 dB per octave filter in the Moog tradition. If you've got that, great. If not, don't stress. But we want a low pass filter for this one because we're going to filter it down. You hear that with no resonance? Now, the reason why we're going to adjust our filter down is so we're then going to send it to an envelope or EG on your keyboard. And the easiest way to hear the envelope is to put the filter all the way down and then crank up the send to the envelope and then adjust the decay on your envelope. Now without the envelope and full resonance, back to max. Here it's just putting a ding, ding, like a little nose on it. And that's one little trick. Uh, then we want to balance those to where you like it, really. The other thing is filter tracking. So if you had it a bit lower down, and then I put filter tracking on, Basically, that will track the filter and open it up the further to the right I go. So often, none is, uh, means that you lose the definition when you get up high. But if I put a little bit on, and it tracks the filter, it just smooths everything over. So that's, we've got our waveform. We've got set our filter down and we've added it to the envelope, adjusted the decay, and we've put a bit of keyboard tracking on there so it opens up so we can hear those higher notes. The next bit for me is maybe a little bit of release so we go to the amp envelope. Awesome. So I've got a little bit of release on there, so it's not such an abrupt ending when I'm playing the note. The other next thing to do is to inject some form of drive, just like a guitar player. We've got our sound now, we've got a pokey. Imagine the envelope is the pick attack. We've adjusted. Now we want to get a bit of drive. Often on a synth, you may have drive into the filter or after. On this one, we've got both, so you can hear what it sounds like. I'm gonna put a little bit of drive on. Without. With the maximum, you'll hear it. Now, that maximum amount of drive really 
compresses the sound and that's not what we want. We want it to be pokey. So this is full drive. Hear how that's compressing? So I like one. That's that balance of it's got a bit of hair, but it's also got the trans in at the beginning of the note. The next bit is maybe running it through some amp simulation to get drive or drive at the end of the chain. Maybe you've got a distortion pedal or something like that. I can do that here, assign it to the synth, and this is just the stock drive that comes on. So without, with, probably a little bit much. But the next bit is we want to smooth everything over. So let's go to the voice mode. At the moment, we could still play chords. Uh, ooh. I can play chords, but I want to make it monophonic. So I can't play the chords now. Just getting one note at a time. And that already will smooth out your playing. I personally like legato. where it doesn't re-trigger the envelope. Which when you're doing faster runs, I like the way that decays when I'm playing it. So just a little bit of glide on there. That's what we got, chose the waveform, filter, envelope, Bit of drive into the filter, the keyboard tracking. We've also got a little bit of drive over here. Maybe let's put it through a twin. I like how that's given it some form of warmth by putting it through the cab sim. Bit more decay because I'm losing the filter. Nice, playing well for me there. I just want to thicken it up a little bit. So we could either add another oscillator or on here I have unison. So check out how this sounds. I like a little bit of unison on there. I might open up a bit more envelopes so I get more top end. Now, Next step is we want to apply some vibrato. I'm doing it manually at the moment. It's all right when I'm there, but when I've done a full, I can't apply that vibrato, right? It just doesn't work. So I need to assign it either to this wheel or after touch. I'm gonna do it to the wheel. Check out your manual for that. Most keyboards can do this. Let's put it on the wheel. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. That, that's way better than... You can't really do it. Say so it doesn't matter what thing you've got. So you want to put that on the wheel or after touch. Check this out. I often find after touch vibrato works better for chords, like print stuff. When, when you're here, you've got the hand when you're shredding. It's nice on the wheel. just get used to putting your thumb in on that. That's pretty much it. We then want to put time-based effects, just like any guitar tone on there. So let's start with a bit of a delay. I'm going to sign it on here. One thing that I love is getting some stereo delay going on this. It's our moment to shine in the arena, in the fricking, what do they call it? Marquee. I'm in the marquee at the back. I want some fricking sauce on there. But we want to keep it out the way of this punchy sound. So I'm going to go stereo. On here we could ping pong. And then we want to just tap a pretty slow quarter note. Other thing, if you've got filtering options on a delay or a delay pedal, I recommend filtering it. So I like taking off the bottom. So I'm going to take off the bottom because I want that. I want the delay to be heard out there. I don't want too much bottom end in there. A little bit wet. Let's 
still a bit wet. Dial back the feedback. Cool. Nice. Take that feedback down way too more, too long. Nice, that's what we want. And again, if you can have it assigned somewhere, because when you get to the gig, it's guaranteed to be the wrong level. It'll be too wet or too dry. You'll need to add that to taste, right? The next thing is a reverb. Let's go for something a little big. This is the stage reverb. Now we've got that, that's a bit more dry. Pretty much there. The last thing, and this is a little bonus tip, is you see me pitch bending. I've done a video on pitch bending basics, but essentially I'm just shredding pentatonic and on every note of the pentatonic you can bend up a whole one. Really simple, whatever you're doing there. I want to... One of my big tips is changing the pitch bend range. So I want to go up a tone, two semitones. So often on analog synths, you might have to set this manually. You want a pitch bend range of plus two. This is very personal for me. The other one is this. So if I go to sound and it says synth pitch stick range, it's got a mode of plus two and minus 12. Check this out. So I can do dive bombs. So that's cool. If you've got a digital keyboard, often you can go up an amount and down. That's personal preference. Some guys like getting poshed with it, but that's a good starting point. I hope that helped. Other than that, that's about it. Shred, uh, obviously add co combinations. If you have more oscillators, say two, three, I'm using the unison thing here to thicken it out. Play with detuning them. But often I find that this simple, pokey thing. We'll cut through like a knife. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know. We can learn from the hate. We get quite a fair amount of it, especially when we do Behringer stuff. But as you notice, we're still going and we will continue to move forward because we learn from your hate and I appreciate you taking the time out. I mean, I personally never left a comment, but I'm fascinated by people doing it. Thank you so much. See you soon. Ha <laughs> ha.